What up everybody? Back again here with our area unit. Today we're going to be talking about finding the area of rectangles. So let's uncover our objective today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the area of rectangles not covered in unit squares by using the area formula. So if you've been following along with us on our playlist, last lesson we discovered the area formula and we used it to find the area of rectangles that were still covered with unit squares. Today we're going to take those unit squares away and still use our area formula. But first let's go over some math vocabulary just so we're all on the same page. You don't need to write these down today because you already wrote them down in the previous lesson. I just want to quickly review them. So a dimension, a dimension is a measurement of length in one direction. So we talked about how a line can only be measured in one direction. So it has one dimension. You call it 1D. A rectangle can be measured with length and width. So we call that two-dimensional because it can be measured in two different directions. And then a cube is three-dimensional because you can do length, width, some people call it depth, and then height. It can be measured in three directions. All of our area units focus on two-dimensional shapes, in particular the rectangle and the square. And because this is an area lesson, we want to review area. Area is the number of unit squares that cover the surface of a figure. And you can do area of really any figure, but again, we're focused on rectangles and squares in this unit. This is our area formula that we discovered last lesson. We have area equals length times width. We're using multiplication and repeated addition to help us solve these area questions. So our multiplication sign is going to say groups of because it's representing repeated addition. So last lesson we talked about finding the area of something like this using our formula. So in our very first lesson we talked about finding the area of this rectangle by just counting the unit squares that cover it, right? Last lesson we started talking about finding the dimensions and using our area formula of length times width to help us figure that out. So we'd label one, we'd label this dimension as one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could say our length is six units, and then we label our width, our second dimension, as three units. And then instead of counting one by one, we realized this was really an array. So we're going to do six groups of three and solve this and figure out that our answer is 18 square units. So we started using the square units to actually help us figure out how long and how wide our rectangles were, right? We use, we, we use these to count by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's how we came up with our length dimension. And then one, two, three for our width. And that's a great way to introduce this. It's a great way to figure out that when you're finding area, you're really figuring out the answer to an array question and how many squares we can cover with something with columns and rows. I don't know about you, but in my life, I don't walk around a lot and see rectangles just covered with squares unless it's like a tile floor. In fact, I rarely ever see that. But if we get rid of our array and just label our rectangle as six and three, did that change the area? And the answer is no, our area is still 18 square units. I would need 18 square units to cover this, all right? Even if the square units aren't there, I would need 18 of them to cover it. So whether or not the square units are there or not there, we still have to visualize the array. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So to do that, we want to have some steps in place. So go ahead and write these down in your notes. If you don't have your notes, you can find them in the description to the video. Step number one, if we're trying to find area of a rectangle, we want to find one length and one width. We talked a little bit about that last lesson and how important it is that we find one of each, but we'll go over that again today. We want to substitute them into your area formula. So put the length for the L and the width for the W, and then we're going to use repeated addition. We're going to multiply to find the area. Those are our three steps we're going to do. Let's take a look at using them in our I do problem. So here we, it says, how many square inches would you need to cover this rectangle completely? Because it's asking me for square inches and it's telling me to cover this, I know this is really an area problem. So my statement's going to say, the area is blank square, and now typically we've been using units, right? Because we were covering them with unit squares. But now our unit is inches. So instead of saying square units, our statement is going to say square inches. Because if we had the squares, each one of them would be a square inch. 
That's what the units are telling us. So I'm gonna write down my area formula here. I have area equals length times width. And again, what I wanna picture is, even though there aren't square inches here covering this to make an array, if I'm finding the area, that's really what I'm doing. It's like I could draw an array and have eight columns and then three in each column to help me figure it out. That's what you need to picture when you talk about area. That's why in our definition we use the word cover. So you can visualize that array as you do it. Now I need to find the one length and one width. Here's a big misconception. They labeled all the sides of our rectangle. But you don't need all four. You only need one length and one width because you want to know how many columns your array would have and you want to know how many would be in each column. So I know my length is going to be eight. So area equals eight groups of three. So if I were to draw out my array, it would have 24 square inches. Okay, so my area for this, how many square inches would I need to cover this entire shape? 24 square inches. Let's take a look at a we do problem. And again, I'm gonna use my area formula to help me solve this because we're doing area today. And the question says, what is the area of this square? Now this square is gonna be very important in a second, but let me write my statement. I'm gonna say the area is blank square and I see that my units here are gonna be centimeters, so I'm gonna say square centimeters. Step number one is find one length and one width, but they've only given me one of my dimensions, right? And I need two, I need length and width. They love to try to trick you with this question, but what do you know about a square? You know a square has four congruent sides. All the sides are the same. So if you want to make your width four, then your second dimension would also have to be four centimeters because it's a square. So they love to try to trick you with that. They only give you one of the sides, but if they tell you it's a square, that means all the sides have to be the same. So now you have your two dimensions. You have your length and your width. So you plug them in and you're gonna have four columns if you drew your array and there'd be four in each column. So you're gonna have four groups of four. So if you drew an array to cover this with square centimeters, you would need 16 square centimeters to do that with. Again, visualize the array even when it's not there. It's gonna help you as you get to harder and harder math. Let's do a U-try problem. So here we have the U-try. If you're ready to try this one by yourself, go ahead and push pause and you can push play when you're ready to check your work. Again, you can be answering this in your notes. If you aren't ready yet, that's totally okay. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Giving effort, that's how you get better at something. You can do this as another we do problem. So hopefully you just paused it and you push play and you're checking your answer. So my question says, what is the area of this rectangle? So my statement's gonna say, the area of this rectangle is blank and then my unit is meters. So I'm gonna say square meters. So the first thing I wanna do, I know that I'm trying to find my area, okay, which is really a multiplication. So I'm gonna do length times width as my formula. I want to find one length and one width. You need to find two dimensions, and actually they only give you two. So they made this one nice and easy. So your length is gonna be nine, and your width is going to be four. Again though, it doesn't really matter if you make your length four and your width nine, because we learned about arrays last lesson. We learned about arrays last lesson, that you could turn this, and if you turn it, your dimensions would change, right? Now your length would be four and your width would be nine, and that's totally fine because you're not gonna change the area, you're just turning it, just like you used to turn arrays to write down your two different multiplication equations. Let me turn it back though, so we don't confuse ourselves, make it straight, there we go. Put that back right there. All that to say, you could solve this by doing four times nine or nine times four. It doesn't matter, it just depends on how you view the array that you're drawing. But I'm gonna say that there were nine columns and there was four in each column. So I'm gonna do nine groups of four, my length times my width. And if I did an array and I had nine groups of four, it would take 36 square meters to cover the surface of this rectangle. Uh, hopefully you got that question right. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. So figure out what you did wrong. If you only remember one thing from this lesson day, I want you to remember that the formula for area is area equals length times width. And that when you find area, really you're trying to find the product of an array question. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We would love to have you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out our area and perimeter song if you haven't done so already. And if you haven't, please like and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you join our Instructive Beats family. Again, thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. Instructive Beats.
out.